Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm happy to be here, and welcome to Vancouver. Uh, not that long ago, it looked like this. It, only 16,000 years ago, we were here, in the middle of an ice, the ice sheet. And Vancouver, we were under 3,000 feet of ice. It was flowing to the sea. Vancouver remained underwater as the ice began to melt and the land began to emerge. And about 10,000 years ago, people began to show up on this northwest coast. And they were hunters, and they copied the structure of animals to build skeletal boats covered with skins. And about 5,000 years ago, the rainforest, as we know it, matured, and people began to build boats by removing wood until nothing was left except a canoe. And the result was a civilization unlike any, anywhere else on Earth. So when Vancouver arrived here in 1792, there were thousands of people living on this inlet. Yet only a trace of them remained when British Columbia became a colony of England in 1858. This was only three blocks away from here. You can go to that intersection today. All the trees were cleared from Vancouver, but Stanley Park was preserved. And I arrived in Vancouver obsessed with kayaks at age 17. I thought I'd died and gone to heaven. There were kayaks on the $2 bills. <laughs> and my hero was Richard Henry Dana, who had left Harvard and run away to sea at age 19. I joined the crew of the Dasanaqua. We carried anything anywhere. And there's 40,000 islands on the British Columbia coast. We came here, to, we would tie up here in Coal Harbor to drink beer downtown. We carried charter parties up Burrard Inlet to Belcara Park, where I ended up living for 19 years, starting with a small treehouse, <laughs> 95 feet up in a Douglas fir. And I wasn't trying to save the rainforest. Everything seemed trying to save. No, all I was trying to save was rent. <laughs> and, and I lived there for three years, looking out through Second Narrows at, at where we are now, Vancouver Harbor. It was, it, living in the forest canopy was an entirely different world. And tree rings are nature's way of digitizing time. So this piece of cedar from the treehouse spans 544 years. In 1741, only three inches ago, the Russians arrived, surrounded by amphibious beings. They named Aleuts, this kayaker they've labeled Amerikansky. And this particular species of high-speed kayak soon went extinct. And I did what Stuart did. I tried to extract its DNA and bring it back. But you have to bring back breeding pairs. It's like the passenger pigeon or the woolly mammoth. You have to bring back the flock or the herd. So with the help of many people, I tried to bring back the bidarka, which is Russian for kayak, as a way of life, not as a sport. And for a brief moment, it worked. And we built the mother of all kayaks, named the Mount Fairweather. It was 48 feet long, and it's still sitting on the beach at Belcara Park, just eight miles from here, out through the Narrows. It is a relic of a dream that one day a human-powered civilization would return to the Northwest Coast. Sort of a crazy, youthful dream. So, like me, Richard Henry Dana went back to Harvard, became a lawyer for the rest of his life, but he published The Seaman's Friend to help the, the, sort of the uh, mistreated seaman of the 19th century who hoisted the sails that at that time powered the world. And the idea I want to leave you with, thanks to Stuart, is the de-extinction of commercial sale. This may be next year, it may be in 100 years, maybe in 1,000 years, but commercial sale deserves to come back. So 90% of global trade is still ocean freight. Even in the 19th century, the efficiency of sailing ships reached 60% because there's no transmission losses. The motion of the atmosphere translates directly into the movement of freight. In the trade winds, it's easy to capture far more energy than is needed to drive the ship. 
And th through hybrid sail with onboard energy storage, it enables the redistribution of wind in space as well as in time. And sail lost out to steam, not over speed, but over scheduling. And we can solve that problem quite easily today. So imagine the entire planet as a single wind turbine, and the oceans are the hydraulic bearing, and the blades of the turbine are a fleet of ships. And that's where we are here. Thank you.